Hi, I'm Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV 7. You're watching a show where we go around to all the interesting sites around Queen Anne's County and share with you some places you can take your family, some people who are producing interesting things. We've got Jay Falstead with us today. Jay, thanks for having us. Good morning, Fred. Now, we're talking lavender today. Tell us what you call your spot. This is uh, Calico Fields Lavender Farm, and we're located between Millington and Southersville, right off of 313. And a beautiful spot. We've got Unicorn Lake right near us, right? And just you've got uh, what, goats walking across the field, chickens, ducks, kids, and a little bit of everything, and a couple of tourists, it looks like. We, we have a little bit of everything going on here. Now, tell us about this, because I, I tell you what, I'm going to tell everybody the truth in advertising here. I used some of your soap this morning. Terrific, all right? Not only did the dog not growl at me this morning because I smelled halfway decent, but it's a very mild, gentle soap. So tell me, first of all, when do you plant lavender? Tell me about lavender. Sure. Um, we started uh, lavender uh, almost 10 years ago. We started with 50 plants. Uh, we just wanted to see um, what we could do with it. And over those years, uh, the field continues to expand, and with that, we have tried coming up with new and different products that uh, use lavender. So around the farm, uh, we have beehives and a couple other things that we grow, but lavender is our dominant crop. Now, Jay, let's start from the very, let's make this Lavender 101, okay? okay? When do you plant lavender, and what are you planting? Are you planting seeds, or actually, what do no, you No, we actually start with the plant. It starts okay. as a plug. Okay. And uh, it usually takes about two years before you can start getting um, harvestable flowers in order to do it. And then once the plant starts producing, we do one of two things with it. We dry the buds, uh, and in our barn, we have a whole drying section where we, we dry everything. And then the other part you can do with it is distill, distill the plant down for the oil. And then once we have that, we integrate either of those into a lot of the products Whatever that the we product. make. Yeah. Now, how about the care and maintenance? Okay, so you plant it. It takes about two years to really germinate to it's a marketable type thing, if that's the correct yeah. term. What, I mean, I see you've laid these out in very neat rows. It's well manicured. What's the, is there maintenance besides Mother Nature? Yeah, there is a little bit. Um, it's not just simply a matter of putting the plant in the ground and then watching it grow. Um, what you'll see here is we actually had to uh, sort of make some adjustments. Lavender typically likes it very dry. And okay. uh, if you can imagine where it grows in the Mediterranean and that sort of thing where it's a lot more arid, here we've got a lot of humidity. So we spaced our, our rows out a little bit wider. We, splace, we spaced the plants a little bit uh, further apart. And, um, and so, so that so way they far, stay a little bit of dry. Yep, they the get, air a, coming get a little bit of air circulation. And then the soil conditions really have to be um, optimum in order for it to grow right. Uh, where we are right now, Fred, is um, our soil is very rocky and sandy mm -hmm. uh, and is very well drained. Um, that happens to work well for lavender, uh, but other crops maybe not so much. So um, we're in really sort you of a unique a good spot. spot right you here. hit a good yeah. spot. Now, in terms of, is there daily? I mean, okay, do they have to water it on any type of regular basis? Or they don't want you want no, it dry. No, water act, or uh, lavender actually likes it really dry, okay. and so. Uh, from our perspective, again, um, because of the well-drained soil, um, any water that we do get uh, usually goes through pretty quickly. Sure. So, Okay, so you, you plant it. And two years later, how do we harvest it? So it's all done by hand. Okay. Um, it's all harvested with a, uh, a Japanese rice knife, which is like a little corn knife. And uh, unfortunately, there's no mechanized equipment that's available so in this So this is country. all done by hand? All done all by, by hand. hand. It's very labor-intensive. Um, over the course of the next few weeks, uh, we'll be harvesting all this lavender. And everything that you see right here, um, most of it will go towards oil production. So we'll put this in a, in a still and cook it down. Now, June, July is the traditional harvesting season for lavender? Is yes. Typically okay. what happens is the lavender will, the, the early uh, English lavender will start blooming usually in early June, uh, maybe by the second week. And, we, and that's the beautiful color of the lavender we see right yeah. there. Yeah. And then the French lavender, which are the larger plants, they'll start coming along more from the mid part of June towards the latter and part of the month. And you have both here? We have, we have 10 different varieties of lavender here on the farm. And, um, and we, both English and French, with a little bit of Spanish, I think. And, uh, and we harvest all of it. Now, I've seen pictures, and you and I have talked about this, and I posted a couple on uh, my Facebook. There's these beautiful pictures, I guess it's southern France, you're going to correct yes. me, of these huge lavender fields, just gorgeous. 
Well, they've been growing lavender over there for hundreds of years. Okay, so, right. um, yeah, fortunately or unfortunately, we can't really compete with that. Um, this was done really more of an, of an experiment to start yeah. with. And it just so happens that now that we've done it, we're, we've you grown it in into it. something. It yeah. Is lavender, again, I apologize for my ignorance, is it a worldwide come on? In other words, what's, is it grown in a lot of places in America it and is. Europe? It okay. is. Um, it's mostly grown, at least in the United States, it's mostly grown on the West Coast. West Coast. Uh, Washington State and Oregon are big lavender growers okay. right now, okay. uh, particularly the area like around Spokane where it's very arid and dry. Um, and then there are a couple of lavender farms uh, up north, like in Massachusetts and also in Michigan. Are you so. unique to Maryland? Or? Um, there are other lavender farms in Maryland. Okay. Uh, there's a couple over on the western shore. I'm not familiar with any that are on the eastern shore. There's one located down by the beach. Okay. Um, so you've kind of got the local market here for the eastern shore, so to speak. Yeah. You know, there are other lavender farms farms that buy a lot of their products and sell it to tourists and that sort of thing. What we pride ourselves on is not only do we grow everything here, but we make everything We produce here. something. And yeah. we're going to talk about that. Okay, so we plant it. Two years later, we're ready to harvest in June and July. We use this Japanese knife, special yeah. knife. How about show us again this rather strange looking instrument you have here? So this is a Japanese rice sickle. Okay. Uh, it's very It's what sharp. they harvest rice with. Yeah. Uh, and so we use it for lavender. It works out really well. It's extremely sharp. It's serrated. But what we'll do is we'll go around the plant and we'll grab a big bunch and then we'll just cut it off and then we'll bind it. And once it's bound... You just tie it up with some twine, would, it looks like. Is that yeah, a rubber just, band or this something? This is just rubber band for okay. right now. But this will hang upside down uh, just like that. And... Um, once it's upstairs and in the drying area, then this will be dry in about four to six weeks. So now when we say upstairs, up in your barn, when you say hang, are they actually hanging from the ceiling or are you just stacking No, we make up? racks. We've oh, got a rack set up okay. and, uh, and they're hanging up there. And then, uh, as I say, in about four to six weeks, they'll be dry enough. And then what we do is we harvest all these buds off of that. Now, how do you harvest a bud? So we can do it, we do it a couple different ways. Uh, we've got a little that machine that, um, that pulls them off. And then another way we do it is we roll it. We roll them uh, okay. and Kinda then all the buds come off, off and then okay. uh, they sift out. And then the steps from there are what? Okay, you've got my buds off. And, yeah. and then you what, have one or two choices or what? So what we'll do is once the buds are off, then we'll integrate the buds with uh, some of the products that we have. Like we make sachets and we make eye pillows and that sort of thing. So those buds will go in there. The other thing we can do is once we have all the plant here and without the rubber band, we'll just throw all of this into the still and okay. we'll cook it down. And then once it's all cooked down, um, then we get two products out of that process. One is hydrosol, uh, which is basically distilled lavender right. water, and people will spray on uh, bed linens and that sort of thing. Keep it a very but then the, and smell, yeah. But the big thing is the oil. And okay. once we have the oil, then we uh, use the oil for all different kinds of things. Okay. Well, why don't we go in your little shop and show us some of the products we, you can make? Okay? Sure. Now, Jay, we're in your little shop. Now, look, I'm just going to give a personal testimony. The soap uh, that I bought yesterday was just terrific. Oh, I mean, it's it just it, it, easy to get a lather up and just leaves a very pleasant scent. So tell us some of the products you make. Sure. Um, I can't claim credit for the soap okay. making. My wife does all of that. All right. And um, she's actually Who won't appear with... on TV, so we want to make sure that people know we're not keeping her off. That's right. Right. Okay. She's, uh, she just didn't want to be on TV. Sure. But she has come up with a product line that, um, that we have here. And so we make a wide variety of soap, uh, candles, lotion, lip balm. Uh, if it's got lavender in it, you make it. we probably make it. And, and you make so it all right here. It's all made right here. It's all made right in the county. And uh, we're proud of that fact that it's all made locally. We grow it here. We make it here. And... Um, the good news is we sell it everywhere. Uh, we can gotten, get it online, right? Yep, you can get it online, and so we've been selling um, uh, to places across the country. Great. Now, let's remind everybody, when can they come here? How can they find you online? What's the procedure you like? So we have an online presence. Uh, okay. The farm's name is Calico Fields Lavender, so and the website is, in. yep, okay. if you type in Calico Fields Lavender, it'll come up. Uh, but it, the website is calicofieldslavender.com. And it lists all the products, how all much our, they are, and you can just order right online? Yeah, okay. all of our products are uh, online. And then um, typically we're open on Sundays, uh, generally from about 10 to 3. Okay, so um, Sundays, Sundays is the day you like the people to come. Yeah, we're okay. also at farmer's markets. We're at the okay. Chestertown Farmer's Market on Saturday. 
Saturdays. Um, so they can most find Saturdays. you. Can oh, yeah, we're you. around. Okay, great. Yeah. And the shop is a delightful little shop, and your wife has some terrific stuff. Guys, if you need gifts, and the same thing for the women, there's some wonderful gifts. I mean, you got all types of stuff and a very nice display. I mean, everything from lotions, correct? Yeah. Soaps. I mean, Jay, like these, these are all lotions, body lotions? A lot of them are. A lot of these are soaps, and then uh, we have the oil and uh, room sprays. Um, we also sell beehives, uh, mason beehives. Um, and so we've got a little bit of everything, and um, both so, and, for men and, and women. I mean, we sell, as, as you noted, we sell soap for men, and... Um, and we've got a little bit of everything. And you don't mind people coming up Sunday with kids, right? So they can see the field, see the billy goats, and maybe buy some soap or you something. You know, we're happy to have people come in. Uh, we've got a really special farm here, I think, and so we're, we're always happy to share it. Okay. Well, Jay, look, thanks. We've had a wonderful time. Please tell Duke the billy goat I'll be back, all right? Okay. Sounds okay. great. Thanks for coming out. Thank you.